All right, some tricky questions coming up for gravitational and electric fields for A-level physics. Number one, what do field lines show? It's slightly different for gravitational and electric fields. For gravitational fields, it shows the direction of force on a what we call point mass. And we know that's always attractive, so it's always towards the mass. But for electric fields, it's the direction of force on a positive charge. We might call it a positive test charge. So that means they go away from positive things and towards negative things. Two, what do field lines look like for A, a uniform field, and B, a field that is getting stronger? For a uniform field, we have parallel lines, and for a field that's getting stronger, the lines are closer together. The more densely packed the field lines are, the stronger the field at that point. Three, what is Newton's law of gravitation? F equals GMM over R squared, where G is the universal gravitational constant. In words, the gravitational force between two bodies is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Don't forget that distances are measured from the center of the masses. Similarly for, what is Coulomb's law? F equals KQQ over R squared. In words, the electrostatic force between two charges is proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. If you don't know that version of the equation, 5k is the shorthand for the constant involving permittivity of free space. It's 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. What is this equal to? It's 9 times 10 to the 9 to 2 sig figs, so it's a really useful number to have in your head to use as a shortcut when doing calculations. 6. What are the equations for gravitational and electric potential energy, and how do they relate to force? Similar to the equations for force, they are GMM over R and KQQ over R, not R squared in this time. Why? Because we know energy, or work done, is force times distance, so all we're doing is taking our force equation and timesing by R. 7. What are the equations for gravitational and electric field strength, and how do they relate to force? Field strength is force per something, so newtons per kilogram or newtons per coulomb. For gravitational, G equals big G M over R squared. For electric fields, it's KQ over R squared. It's just like the equations for force, we just have one mass and charge instead of two. So F equals MG, that's weight, and F equals EQ. Eight, what is the definition of potential? It's the work required to move a unit mass or unit positive charge from infinity to that point. So the unit is joules per kilogram or joules per coulomb. Nine, how are equipotentials related to field lines and how do they differ for radial and uniform fields? They always cross perpendicular to each other. Equipotentials are straight and an equal distance from each other for a uniform field, and they're curved and a varying distance if not, say for a radial field like here. 10. When can we use E equals mgh instead of the full equation that we've just seen? We can only use it if G, field strength, doesn't change. That's either for a uniform field, we don't really have those in gravity really, but if we zoom in close enough, the change in height is so relatively small that G hardly changes, so we can use it. So if we're throwing a ball up in the air, then we can just use E equals MGH. We don't have to use E equals GMM over R. 11, how do you find escape velocity or distance of closest approach? You just equate potential energy and kinetic energy, GMM over R or KQQ over R equals half mv squared. 12. What is different about finding resultant field strength and finding resultant potential? Field strength is a vector, so that means direction matters. So if two planets are pulling in opposite directions, then the field strengths cancel each other out at some point. However, for potential, it's a scalar, so we only add the magnitude. 13. Apart from at infinity, what is the only other way there can be a potential of zero? It's not possible for gravitational fields, but it is possible for electric fields if we have a positive and a negative charge, for example. Because the potentials are positive and negative, they add up to zero somewhere between. 14. What is the alternative name for field strength, and what is the relevant equation? No, we're not talking acceleration due to gravity. It's also known as potential gradient. So that means that electric field strength or gravitational field strength is equal to delta V by delta R. 15. How do you calculate change in potential energy from potential? All you do is multiply the change in potential by mass or charge. 
and the full equations, we can't stick the change in distance on the bottom, it has to be the full GMM over R minus GMM over R, or KQQ over R minus KQQ over R. And you can see that I've factorized here. 16, fairly tricky. How do you deal with a field strength of zero between two objects when you only have one distance? How are you going to represent this in an equation? Okay, so if there's no resultant field strength, then that means that the individual field strengths are equal and opposite at that point. So we can see gm over r squared for one planet equals gm over r squared for the other. Cancelling out the g's, we just say that m1 over 10 squared is equal to m2 over y minus 10 all squared. It's the total distance take away the first distance. What you want to do is flip the whole equation on its head, square root everything, so we end up with 10 and y minus 10 on the top and root m1 and root m2 on the bottom. Then we expand and then rearrange for y. 17, how do you calculate the force on a particle between two parallel charged plates? Well, we know that F is equal to EQ, but what is E equal to? Well, because it's parallel plates, we can say that the electric field strength is equal to V over D. That is the potential difference divided by the separation of the plates. So combining those two, we end up with F equals QV over D. 18, what are the equations for gravitational and electric potential? V for gravitational fields is minus GM over R. And for electric fields, it's just KQ over R. Now it's a minus on the left because potentials are always negative for an attractive field. However, we don't have a minus for the electric field one because this field is being produced by a negative charge if it's going to be attractive to a positive charge. 19, what can you find from this graph of potential against distance and how? You can find the field strength at any point by just calculating the gradient. 20, what does this graph of G against R look like for inside a planet? It's linear because G is proportional to R. We know it has to be zero at the center because you're being pulled in all directions equally. 21, what is the area under this graph of force against distance equal to? Well, it's area, so it's force times distance, so it's gonna be work done. Therefore, it's change in potential energy. 22, as soon as you see an object orbiting another, like a satellite and a planet, what can you say is true? What equation can you write down? We know that GMM over R squared is equal to MB squared over R. The gravitational force is the centripetal force. It can be M omega squared R instead, depends what you need. Note that this is also true for something that is, quote, just coming off the surface of a planet or an object that is spinning fast enough. 23, what is Kepler's law and how do you derive it? It's T squared is proportional to R cubed. And we get that from using what we just had, GMM over R squared equals MV squared over R, but we don't want V's in there, so we replace V with two pi R over T, circumference divided by time period. Rearrange, take out all the constants, and we just have T squared proportional to R cubed. Finally, 24, how is gravitational field strength of a planet proportional to its density? Pretty tough one. Well, we know that density is mass divided by volume, so there's m over 4 thirds pi r cubed. Taking out the constants, we end up with rho is proportional to m over r cubed, but we know that g, gravitational field strength, is proportional to m over r squared. Therefore, multiplying by r, g is proportional to rho r. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like, and if you haven't seen my mind map on fields yet, then click on the card and it'll take you there. Bye for now.